Hello folks, it's Professor Fiore, and now it's time for Simple Diode Clampers. What is a diode clamper? A clamper simply takes an AC input signal and clamps it, in other words, shifts it so that the signal is entirely positive or entirely negative. It's essentially adding a DC offset to the signal so that there's, you know, it's all positive, there's no negative. Or, as I said, it's all negative, there's no positive. So the peak-to-peak -peak value doesn't change. It's just been shifted either positively or negatively so that, you know, that peak now hits zero rather than some large positive or negative voltage, right? Consequently, it's sometimes referred to as a DC restorer. So you would have the signal, you know, if you capacitively coupled it, that would rip out the DC. Um, so this is called a DC restorer sometimes. Let's begin with this circuit. Here I have a 20 volt peak, 500 hertz sine wave. And in series with it is a 20 volt DC source. What do I see at the load? Well, at the load, we see the combination of these two things. So when the input is just starting at zero, we, we're gonna see 20 volts for the offset. When this thing hits the positive peak, we're gonna see 20 and 20 or 40 volts at the output. When this hits its negative peak, or right at negative 20, it's gonna be negative 20 plus 20, which is zero volts at the output. The whole thing will have been shifted up by 20 volts. So we'll do a little transient analysis over here just to verify this. And where's my legend? There it is. So here's VGen, right, the green, coming up, plus 20, minus 20. And V load, we can see, starts at 20, goes up to 40, goes down to zero, and continues. So the whole thing has been shifted up by 20 volts, by the peak value. And that's what's that's what's important there. Not some arbitrary value, it's shifted up by the peak value. Well, the question then becomes, how do I make this sensitive to the input signal? In other words, if the input is 18 volts or nine volts, I want this offset to be that potential, right? I don't wanna to have to come in here and you know tweak a power supply, so to speak. I want it to be sensitive to whatever this input signal happens to be. I want something that holds that voltage, like my power supply does, right? But it, it can be sensitive to whatever the input is. Well, the key here is thinking in terms of holding the voltage. What do I know that would hold a voltage? Well, a capacitor, right? So let's replace this power supply with a capacitor. And we get this circuit. Now, before I go any further, I want you to notice the values that we're using here. So I've got a one microfarad capacitor and a 50K ohm resistor, all right? The time period for the input, 500 Hertz, one over 500 Hertz is two milliseconds. So the positive portion of the sine wave is half of that, it's one millisecond. The negative portion is another millisecond. The time constant for charging and discharging this capacitor, all right, one micro times 50K, right, Ks and micros will get you milli, that's 50 milliseconds. So, you know, it's a couple of orders of magnitude larger than this time period. What that tells us is, is that during the initial application of this signal, this cap is going to sort of try, I put that in quotes, right, caps don't try to do anything. They're not sentient, but, um, you know, it's, we think of it that way, right? It's gonna to try to, to charge up, but the amount of charge that, it, that can be uh, produced, the voltage that's gonna be produced across this capacitor is gonna be minimal compared to the size of the signal. So for that time period, we can treat this as a short, all right? You know, it's really important that we have values here that R times C product is much longer than this frequency that's sensitive to that, right? You'll see why in just a sec. In any case, so for that first half cycle, right? So I've got this plus to minus, this thing is going from zero up to 20 and then back to zero. We can treat this as zero volts. During that entire time, this diode is reversed biased. So it's a high impedance and we can, again, ignore it. So all of that potential drops across to R1. In other words, I am going to see at the output, whatever the heck that first half of the sine wave is, whatever its amplitude is, all right? Now, here's where it gets interesting. On the negative half of the sine wave, right? So now we have a reverse polarity over here, right? So this is zero, 
I have reverse polarity over here, so that's minus to plus for my generator. So that is going to try to send current in this direction, right? So going through R1 or the diode would be plus to minus bottom up. Well, very quickly, you realize if this thing gets to you know, any appreciable value, plus to minus 0.7 turns on D1. And what that does is it sets our load to minus 0.7 volts, right? Because it's plus to minus like this. So this is 7 tenths below ground. And however big that input signal gets, this diode stays on and it locks our output at minus 0.7 volts, all right? Now, the other thing that happens is that the resistance, the internal resistance of D1 is very, very small compared to R1 when it's conducting, right? When this diode is on, this is a very, very small resistance. So that means the charge time constant for C1 goes way, way down. It's actually a lot faster than what the time period of the sine wave is. So what that means is, right, the current's going like this again, right? That what that means is we're going to start charging up this cap. That's going to be plus to minus like this from right to left, plus to minus. And this cap is just going to follow whatever the negative input over here is, right? So this output is locked, and then this thing just builds up. So this is going to get up to 20 volts, negative 20 volts, right? So you're going to have minus to plus. Then you've got a little, you know, uh, plus to minus 0.7 here, and the balance of that, nearly 20 volts, plus to minus across the capacitor. So I've got nearly 20 volts sitting across this capacitor, plus to minus right to left, which is exactly what we have in the original circuit, right? Plus to minus right to left, 20 volts. Okay, now, once that negative peak is hit and it goes to the other side, I've got 20 volts on this, all right? Now I only have maybe, well, let's just throw a number out, like 19 volts, right? Minus to plus 19 volts. But I've got plus to minus 20 here. Where's the other volt go, all right? This is, you know, like I said, a reverse polarity. This is minus to plus. So this has, what ends up happening at this point is this diode is locked, right? You would normally think this is just going to turn on, but because you have plus 20 over here, to turn this thing on, you actually need like 20.7, and that's not what you're getting. You know, this thing is going minus 19, minus 18, minus 15. It's going, it's working its way back to zero, okay? So what ends up happening is this is out of the circuit, and you got R1 again. In other words, this voltage is going to be held. When this thing gets back up to zero, the process repeats, except now you already have 20 volts across this thing. So you wind up with whatever the input is, piggybacking on top of the 20 volts sitting on the cap. Right? Now this is not going to be perfect because we have to deal with this little 7 tenths issue on the, on the diode, right? but it's going to be pretty nice. So let's do a little transient analysis here and you can see what's happening. So I'm going to run this from 0 to 6 so that we can see the first few cycles and you'll see how the, the pieces of this come together. All right. Okay, so these colors are a little too close. I'm going to change the colors. Let's make this one, what do we got here? Blue. That would be good. And we'll make this one, uh, what do you think? Something bright. Lime? Fuchsia! There you go. Oh, that's a screamer. Okay, so put our legend on here. All right, so the capacitor voltage is uh, the maroon here, right? The input generator is the fuchsia, burning your eyeballs, and then uh, blue is the load, all right? Okay, so like I said, initially the capacitor voltage for that first half cycle is hardly going to change at all, and that's what we're seeing over here, right? We're getting a very slight, you can see this thing going downwards. There's a very slight charge on here, but it's for the most part inconsequential. And consequently, um, what we see because this diode is off, whatever the input is, that's what we get across R1. So these two things track perfectly. Once this goes through zero, right, you can split this perfectly right down the middle. 
all right so for the first half while this voltage is going more and more and more negative going from 0 to minus 20 what we find is the output is blocked by d1 at minus 0.7 all right so we can we can verify these amplitudes all right so there it is sitting right about minus 0.7 then right while that's occurring look at the capacitor voltage right we're charging up the capacitor and like i said it's plus to minus right to left so you can see this thing charge 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 we get up to nearly 20 volts right we're just one diode drop short of that let's put our measurement on here all right so we're about a diode drop short of that and we're getting up to uh, it's peaking out at like 19.4 and change okay and then what happens well we, we have this instance where the capacitor voltage is so high that as the generator starts to swing back towards zero diode one turns off right but kvl still has to be maintained so we see potential across r1 beginning to build right so this starts to come up now when you get right to this point right so here where this dotted line is that's where the input is going to zero so what you have at that instant is the uh, capacitor voltage basically and you will find that the load voltage and the capacitor voltage will be the same so if this is zero and this is holding just shy of 20 then we should see just shy of 20 over here right so this will be plus to minus and this will be plus to minus from there to there so we can actually zoom in on here um, and you can see this with some greater accuracy all right so let's see where's our oh nuts that's oh, it's right here that's um tell you what that didn't work out as well as I wanted to. So let's start this instead of starting it at 1.3. Let's start this at, uh, I don't know, 1.2. All right, that's a little better. So here's our two milliseconds right here, right smack dab in the center. So this is the input, right? This fuchsia is the input. So that's zero. And look, right here, Right, the load and the capacitor are the exact same amplitude right kvl has to work out there no question about it it's not k it's not uh, kirkhoff's voltage voltage suggestion right it's kirkhoff's voltage law all right so anyway from there on out right as the input starts to go positive what happens well the capacitor as you can see is holding trying anyway to hold that 20 volts there is going to be a little bit of a discharge but we just add that so this is kind of like that power supply holding that 20 volts we add that so we don't quite get to the 20 volt peak right we're just a little shy of that and you can see okay we're at like 39 volts right so between the diode drop and a little bit of droop a little bit of discharge on the capacitor that's where we wind up all right and then this just continues because um, you know the capacitor is holding that voltage so even on that first negative bit that diode is still going to be maintained off all right so this just continues along like this you know we have a little bit of a, mm, a distortion a little bit of a grunge down here at the negative peak that doesn't go to exactly zero like you know we would prefer but you know the diode is the diode we have the seven tenths to deal with okay and that's exactly what we're seeing down there we get down there and you know you can see okay there you go 700 millivolts that's the uh that's the diode that we have to deal with but other than that you know it's it's automatic right we you know we could come in here and change this amplitude and this thing is still going to work just fine beautiful now the obvious question is what do i have to do to do a negative clamp instead of a positive clamp i mentioned at the output you could do it either way well you know just think about that for a sec if your answer was flip the diode you win the prize what is the prize the prize is the knowledge that you got it right and here you go all right so let's get our 
legend. So VGen is the green now, and the load is the maroon down here. So you can see now there's a little bit of a overshoot. Again, this is going to be about 0.7 volts positive. That negative peak doesn't quite get to minus 40, right? Well, you know, the one thing I'll say about that is the bigger the input, the less that's a problem. You know, what's 0.7 volts out of 120 volts, right? Or, you know, 200 volts or something like that. And if your in in input is really, really small, you know, if it's only like a volt or two, well, that's a huge issue, right? This is not going to work well. As a matter of fact, there is a way you can do this with an active circuit. You can use an operational amplifier, for example, and make an active clamper. Um, that would solve that particular problem. But this is a nice, simple, straightforward kind of circuit. This will do the negative clamp, and this will do the positive clamp. Okay? Beautiful. So, as usual, any questions, leave them down in the uh, comments section. Take care, and I'll see you next time.